I went to Africa. I met this group of boys with 12 year olds and one of them were very popular. I asked, why are you so popular? And he said, can't you see? I have long sleeves. He took his shirt off, rolled it together in sleeves, made a knot and that became a ball. And that's how they could play soccer in the streets. They were traumatized. They lost friends and family members in the war. And they wanted one thing, the opportunity to play. Here in the Viking ship, and the crowd cheering Johan Olaf Foss as he tries to break the world mark. Here he comes. He's got it. World record for Koss. His journey had started and ended with the same simple conviction. As a boy, Johann Olav Koss had decided he was going to be the best speed skater in the world. On the world's biggest stage, he had proved it. But as he celebrated that day, a piece of Koss's mind had already raced out of the arena. He was already pondering a much grander plan for what he was going to do next. The Olympic aid program was going to build schools and teacher institution and do that type of thing. They weren't going to bring sport equipment. So I asked the Norwegian kids through the media, I to say, hey, do you have any sport equipment lying around which I can bring back to Eritrea? And I had no idea. I mean, there was an amazing response just before we were leaving. The newspaper in Norway writes, Koss is bringing soccer balls to starving kids. What an idiot. That's when I got nervous. Nobody had really told me that I was an idiot before, and certainly not on the front page. I did not know much about international development either, and I thought, you know, maybe this is not the right thing. But I couldn't stop. We went up to the president. So I met the president of Eritrea, and I asked him, so I said, you know, you have asked for food, and I'm bringing sport equipment. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. And then he looks at me and said, you know, this is the greatest gift we ever received. It's the first time we feel like human beings. It's something more than just to be kept alive. I felt more like that was a starting point to something different. Koss had realized that establishing an organization independent from the Olympics was the best way to promote his vision. Olympic AIDS stood for every child's right to play. And we thought, you know, there is no better name for us in, in the sports movement to create the right to play, because uh, every child should have the right to play. In this game, your community get together in order to score a goal, isn't it correct? Yes! The objective of this game is immense. Let these children play today to learn how to lead tomorrow. In addition to having fun and, and have playing, they really learn through the games. Basic life skills, or it is in the area of health. When I begin the game, I'll call malaria. Malaria will come. White blood cell will have to come in and push, gently push malaria away. It's not the winning or losing. It is the process. It is the team building. Where girls are traditionally excluded from play, cultural standards would need to be delicately shifted to make change gradually visible. We go and talk with parents to allow them to join our activity because it's right to play for everyone. Child by child, nation by nation, right to play continued to explore ways to use sport to make lives better. And along the way, the program also succeeded in its secondary mission, getting as many athletes as possible involved alongside the children. Do you think every child should have the right to play? Yes. I don't hear you. Yes. No, I can't still hear you. Yes. yes. 
In many ways, this feels like I have an opportunity to give back for all of the things I've been given in my life. And as I look at it, this work gives me much, much more than I still feel I can give to the work. Sometimes, the simplest ideas are the most revolutionary.